In today's screencast, we're going to talk about Coulomb's Law. This is a, a quantitative way of looking at the force between the two electrical charges. This is called a Coulomb's Law because it was uh, developed by a, a physicist, Charles Coulomb, in the 1770s. What he observed is that the force depends both on the amount of the charge and on the distance between the charges. So the first thing we want to look at is the dependence of the force on the distance. What uh, Coulomb found was that the, uh, the force depends on the square of the distance between the charges. It's what we call an inverse squared relationship. That would mean if you doubled the distance between the charges, the force would go down as one-fourth. We will spend a lot of time in class going over this relationship, so we'll want to see what is the change in the force if you change the distance between the charges. The other thing you'll see is the force depends on the charge. If you increase the charge, you'll have more force. The force depends on both of the charges as the, the product of the two charges. So if you were to double both charges, the force would go up four times. So putting all of these together, you'll see that uh, Coulomb's law is expressed by this equation that force is a constant times one charge, we call it QA, times second charge QB, divided by R squared, that where R is the distance between the charges. This uh, constant will give you the value for it. It's a very large number. It's uh, 9 times 10 to the ninth uh, newtons uh, Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. A very large number, which uh, expresses the fact that this uh, electrical, electrostatic forces are, are really strong. The uh, other thing to, to recognize is that uh, electrostatic forces, like all other forces, are a vector quantity. The vectors have both magnitude and direction. This, uh, use the Coulomb's Law equation to get the magnitude of the force. Don't worry about whether the charges are positive or negative. Just use them to find the amount of the force. And then uh, draw a diagram, draw a picture to see the, the charges, see what, what the uh, direction of the force is going to be on the charges. In figure 13, you can see the charge A and B on the top. These are both positive charges. In this case, the, it's a repulsive force, so the, the force of a charge A acting on B goes to the right. The force of charge B, a, um, a charge B acting on A goes to the left. Down below, you can see we have a positive and a negative charge. The force is going to be attractive. So the, the force on charge A from, from charge B is going to be going to the right. The force on B from charge A is going to go toward the left. So just drawing the pictures will we'll show you what the uh, direction of the force is. Use Coulomb's Law to find the magnitude of the charge. Now just look at our, our problem-solving strategies. So if you have a system of charges, f first thing is draw a picture. Now we're only going to do uh, problems where we have charges in a line. You know, we won't have to worry about uh, doing angles and trigonometry for our, our problems here. But you will need to draw all the vectors, find the directions of the forces, use Coulomb's law to find the magnitude of the force, and then knowing the force and the, dire and the direction, knowing the magnitude and the direction, we can do vector sums to find the, the sum of, of all the forces acting on one of the charges. So with that, you'll be able to, uh, to solve all of the problems. The uh, other thing to remember is that if that, uh, the force between the charges is going to be equal and opposite. The same Newton's third law that we've talked about throughout it applies. If you increase the, uh, the magnitude of one of the charges, you will increase the force on both of the charges. All right, with that information, you should be able to do the launch homework and uh, move on to, uh, to the next part of this section.